three in a kitchen, two in a boat, and one treasure chest are among the prizes on this week's 3 to one Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you very much indeed for that lovely welcome and a big good evening, everybody, from your big Saturday entertainment, 321. The show that's three in one, it's a quiz, it's a game, and it's big variety entertainment. And this week for you, we have three music acts, two comedians, and a brand new newcomer that's never been here at 321 before. We know you're going to like him. We have three new couples, of course, and our resident booby prize is always lurking around the corner, Dusty Bin. Come and say hello to him. <laughs> There he is, as always, lurking around at the end of the quiz, ready to send one of our couples home with just a ceramic copy of himself and a few pounds. And remember, he's one at the end of the show. All our contestants take home is a brand new bin. That's all they get. Dusty, off you go. We'll see you a bit later on. Go on, off you go. Yes. <laughs> and time to find out who our contestants are from our lovely Linda Lee Lewis. Linda, Hello. how are you, my mother? Good. Good. As always, love the frock. Isn't it a smashing it's dress? It's not bad. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm sure nobody will. <laughs> Who have we got here tonight? Right, we have Don and Jan Coomer from Guernsey. Our engaged couple are Eddie Cooper and Ruth Abrams from Essex. And we have Andy and Claire Lucker from Surrey. I see. All Good. Right, Good to have you here. Lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, Eddie Cooper and Ruth Abrahams, and you're from Essex, Anald in Essex. Eddie, you're in Ladies Fashions, I hear. And, uh, but you don't operate like the Emmanuels from an ultra-modern showroom in Mayfair, do you? No, no. Where, no. where do you work? Uh, in a market. A oh. street market. In a street market? <laughs> oh, so you flog frocks from a store? <laughs> <laughs> sort of a Barrow Boys boutique, is it? <laughs> <laughs> now then, Ruth, I've got to ask you this question. I'm sure everybody looking in at home tonight, every lady anyway, will be thinking the same about what you're wearing tonight. Is it off the peg or off his store? It's off his stall. Oh, there you are. Come. That's a good advert for you. Good that you're here. We've got Don and Jane Kuma, who are from Guernsey. That's a marvellous place. I was there a long, long time ago. What do you do for a living, Don? I'm an ex-jockey. I'm now an insurance agent. Ex-jockey? Yes. Oh, Mr. Right. Whippy. <laughs> <laughs> and, Jan, you met Don when he was invited to Guernsey to ride a horse. And uh, he asked you out, but uh, you made a deal with him, didn't you? Yes, I did. What I was said that? that if he won on the horse three times, he could take me out. Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, so I see. You had to pass three posts then, Don, on the flat, before you could end right. up in a four-poster in her flat. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you. Andy and Claire Lucker from Englefield Green, Surrey. I know that well. Andy, it says here, you're in the police and you're a defective constable. Uh, a detective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't always been a policeman, though, have you? No, that's correct. What did you used to do? I used to be a baker and confectioner. That really? That's oh, well, right. stick to it. I know a judge. He used to be a baker, now he's master of the rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, <laughs> did he do any baking at home? No, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> You're a working lady, I hear. What do you do? I'm a staff nurse at a local hospital. Nurse, really? Oh, I see. So in your job, you have as many clothes shaves as he does. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good that you're all here. Get ready for our quiz. Good luck to you. You know, on our quiz in 3 to 1, we always give you £10 to start with, OK? Now, it's uh, £10 you get for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever you win at the end of the first round is what you will get for each correct answer in the second round, OK? So if one couple did get two maximums, they could go home with £1,600. That's not bad, is it? I ask you the question, you have to hit the buzzer and you answer. You then get three seconds. If you fail to come up with an answer in the three seconds, I will say on offer and the other two couples will have a go to the chance to go for it. But of course, if they buzz and they are wrong, that question will go into the bin. But I will carry on until I get ten correct answers in the first round, all right? So good luck to you. And here is the first question. On what musical instrument is the last post usually sounded? <coughs> Don and Jan. Hunting horn. Wrong on offer. Eddie and Ruth. Bugle. Bugle is absolutely correct. In which sports do people compete for the America's Cup? <coughs> That's Eddie and Ruth. Yachting. Yachting is right. Of course, won by that marvellous American team. Which uh, country is Prague the capital of? That's Andy and Claire. Um, Thank you. Sorry? Czechoslovakia. That's absolutely right, Czechoslovakia, the home of four million Czechs, unlike my place, the home of three million unsettled Czechs. <laughs> what name? What name is given to the long piece of silk material worn as an outer garment? Are you anticipated? What are you going to say? Sorry? A sari. Sari, well, you anticipated well. I was going to say by Hindu women, sari was absolutely right. 
Oh, sorry, no need to apologise either. Here's the next question. What is the every na everyday name for rubella? That's Andy and Claire. German measles. German measles is right. Which game show uses the phrase, come on down? That's Don and Jan. The price is right. The price is right. That's right, the only show where the prize is a normal one is the audience who need to be certified. <laughs> <laughs> What flowers do people wear on Remembrance Day? That's Eddie and Ruth. Poppies. Poppy is right. What kind of oranges are usually used for marmalade? Seville. Seville is correct. How many inches are there in a metre? Eddie and Ruth. 39. 39. Well, it's actually 39.4. We'll allow that. Thank you. Yeah, you'll remember that when you're in the market, <laughs> won't you? you? Certainly will. Good. Yeah, <laughs> give them the extra foot point four. Here's the next question. In which Charles Dickens novel does the artful dodger appear? Andy and Claire. Oliver Twist. Twist. Oliver Twist is absolutely correct, and that's ten correct answers at the end of the first round. And what do we have here? We've got Don and Jan on £30, but tying for the lead at the moment, Andy and Claire, and Eddie and Ruth both on £50 apiece. Good. <laughs> nice. Nice and close. That's how we like it. Nice and close, but you do get a chance at this point of the quiz to sit back and relax for just a moment, collect your thoughts, because we're going to have our newcomer, 2321, and he's a delightful fellow. I've met him on a few occasions. He comes from down the road at Sheffield. Give a great welcome to Dudley Doolittle. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, and a very good evening to you all. What a pleasure it is to be working in Leeds, Yorkshire people. My grandfather said to me, had it not been for a Yorkshireman dropping a pound note in a butcher's mincer, the world would never have had jigsaws. <laughs> it's, it's nice, it's, I've worked at Yorkshire Television before, actually. And it's funny, when you come in, I, I mean, I came in today and I thought, I'll go into the bar and have a drink, sort of settle me down. And I went into the bar, and it was absolutely packed. I thought it was a Cynthia Payne party at first. <laughs> And I went in, and as soon as you walk in, all the, they all knew, everybody knew everybody. Hello, how are you? I'm all, are you having a drink? Yes, I'll have a drink. Gin and tonic, I'll have a gin. As soon as I walked in, it were all, who's he? <laughs> He's not from round here. How do you know? He's took his hand off his drink. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? It's Dudley Doolittle. Who? Dudley Doolittle. What a stupid name. Is that his proper name? No. What's his proper name? Dennis. <laughs> Dennis what? Dennis Doolittle. <laughs> What does he do? He's a comedian. Who's told him that? <laughs> and I must tell you before I go any further, I have gone through a very unhappy divorce. And nowadays, all a girl has to have to go out with me is a pulse. <laughs> and there was a girl stood at the end of the bar, and she was really thin. She was stood in a green dress. I thought she was a damp patch at first, but she... <laughs> and she was very, very thin. She was built like a racing snake. <laughs> Not saying she had a small bust. It looked like somebody had wallpapered over two light switches. <laughs> I thought, I'll have a go at this. I said, hello, love. She said, hello, Yorkshire girl. I said, would you like a drink? She said, I'll have a pint of bitter. <laughs> what a class girl. I said, what a lovely dress you've got on. I said, it'd look nice on the back of a chair. I said, what are you called? She said, well, actually, she said, I'm called Eileen. I said, what a lovely name. I said, Eileen? I said, Eileen what? She said, Eileen backwards. I said, Eileen? <laughs> Can I give you a lift home? She said, well, I suppose you could, yes. So I got in the car and we set off and we're into Leeds Town Centre. And we stopped at the traffic lights and a policeman knocked and said, come on, pull around this corner. So I pulled around the corner. He said, I have uh, reason to believe you're drunk in charge of this vehicle. I said, you're joking. Drunk? I said, I'm working at Yorkshire TV. I said, oh, they've kept the colour in the beer after all the rain we've had this week, I'll never know. <laughs> he said, I have reason to believe you're drunk. He said, if you're not drunk, tell me the sequence of these lights. I said, well, the sequence is red and... Red and amber, and then it's green. He said, and what comes next? I said, how the hell do I know I've gone by then? <laughs> he said, anyway, what are you doing in the car with this bird? I said, well, you know, I'm doing a, you know, I'm having a dance. He said, what sort of dance? I said, well, yeah, he's like a cha-cha-cha. He said, really? He knocks on the next guy. I said, what are you doing in there? She said, uh, I'm doing a dance as well. He said, what are you doing? He said, she said, I'm, I'm doing the rumba. He knocks on the last guy. He said, what are you doing? He said, I suppose you were doing the bossa nova. And the little girl pops out and says, no, I'm doing the bossa favor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Doolittle. You're going to be hearing a lot more of him, I'm sure. OK, Eddie and Ruth, Don and Jan, Annie and Claire, we're here ready for the second round. You get £30 for each correct answer. The other couples get £50 for each correct answer this time. Again, remember, if you do answer before you hit the button, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to say on offer to the other two couples, but you're doing very well. Keep it that way. Here comes the next question. Which group made the album Brothers in Arms? That's Andy and Claire. Dire Straits. Dire Straits is correct. In which London church is the grave of the unknown warrior? 
That's Andy and Claire. Westminster. Westminster, yes. Can you be more explicit? Abbey. Abbey is right, yes, which of course is next to the City of the Dead, the House of Lords. <laughs> which, <laughs> which character, played by Rex Harrison, on film, ah, you've anticipated, ah, Don and Jan, have they beat you to that? Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle, yes, I was going to say, he was able to talk to the animals. What does the letter J stand for in the builder's term, R-S-J? That's Eddie and Ruth. Joist. Joist is right, apparently it's rolled steel joist, correct? What is the total number of squares on a draft board? Uh, Eddie and Ruth. 64. 64 is correct. What fish is smoked to become a kipper? Don and Jan. Salmon. Sorry? Ah, uh, no. On offer. Andy and Claire. Cod. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> Wrong anyway. Would you believe it's a herring? That's all. No, I can't offer it. Sorry about that. What island does the boot of Italy appear to kick? Andy and Claire. Sicily. Okay. Sicily is absolutely correct. Name the film in which Paul Hogan plays an Australian. Eddie and Ruth. Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. A terrific <laughs> film, isn't it? Yes. Fellow transported to New York. Next question is, who is the patron saint of travellers? Andy and Claire. St. Christopher. St. Christopher. Yes. What is the name of the actress who plays Jenna in Dallas? Donna Jan. Prin um, Priscilla Presley. Correct. Now, how old was Adrian Mole when he wrote his... OK, Eddie and Ruth have anticipated. Twelve and a half. Wrong. On offer. Andy and Claire? Thirteen and a half. Wrong. Twelve and three quarters? No, you can't have a go now. You're both there. It's thirteen and three quarters, <laughs> is what it was. Here's the next question. On what part of the body do people wear galoshes? Eddie and Ruth. Feet. On their feet, of course. Near what Scot... Sorry. Near which Scottish city is Dice Airport? Eddie and Ruth. Edinburgh. Wrong. On offer. Andy and Claire. Glasgow. Wrong. The answer is Aberdeen. And here is the 15th question of the second round. In which city are the 1988 Olympic Games to be held? Eddie and Ruth. Seoul. Seoul. Seoul, indeed. South Korea. And that's the end of our quiz this week. A big, big kiss there. Hey. So. At the end of our quiz, we've got Don and Jan from Guernsey there on £90. We have Andy and Claire on £250, the winners of our quiz. They're the people from Essex. Eddie and Ruth, £300 they've got. <laughs> so, we always have to say goodbye to the couple with the lowest amount of money, but 90, 90 quid's not bad, is it? Not, bad. Eh? not too bad. And I'm sure you want one of those, don't you? Yes, worth a few, Bob. Keep hold of that. I should give it to her. Don't let that out of your hands, will you? <laughs> anyway, we don't want you to run away, not too far away, because we want you to help one of our acts in part two. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. He's a terrific performer. We're going away for the break. We'll be back with more guests and big prizes. Three, two, one. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Two of three, two, one, and we've got Andy and Claire, who are from Surrey, playing in this part of the program against Eddie and Ruth, who are from Essex. Now, you know what happens here, folks, don't you? And we're going to show you three items at the end of each one of them. One of our guests is going to come here to the table. They'll leave you a clue object, and they'll read a rhyme. When we have three on the table, you have to choose one to reject. If you are the lucky couple who gets through our elimination question, more buzzers for you, OK? Great, so we're going to go on then and have item number one, and we're kicking off our variety in great style with a great bunch of boys and girls with a number called Hip to be Square. Welcome the Alan Harding Dancers. <laughs>
I've got to be fair, those costumes are a bit good as well, aren't they? Well, thank That's you. a bit too chauvinistic, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. What are you going to leave as the clue here? I'm leaving a world globe. OK, a globe of the world. Right, fair enough. And what does, the, what does the rhyme say? The rhyme says, from all four corners, they'll bounce your way. You'll see what happens without delay. Ah, 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 that is the first one. Not much idea, I suppose, at the moment. <laughs> Thanks very much, Terry. Mm. Thank you. Lovely Good routine. Luck. Well done. <laughs> Lovely to say. What was the rest of it? What was the rest of it? <laughs> no idea. Is it too early about that one? Trampoline. Trampoline. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it could be known on this programme. Too early for you, is it? Bounce. Tires bounce, oh, don't they? Yeah. I wish you'd rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to go and keep thinking about that. We'll have item number two. And we have comedy and magic. And here's a young entertainer who's making a great name for himself up and down the country. I saw him a few years ago. He really is terrific. Wayne Dobson is here. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm going to meet you. Great to meet you. How are you? All right, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> and what's your name again? Gladys. Oh, that's great. <laughs> great to meet you. OK? Yes. Good. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I will sit down, OK? You don't mind? No. Good. <laughs> What I'm going to do is uh, some close-up magic, all right? This is where the cameras come really close, all right? And the first thing we're going to do is the thing with four little stones. Have you seen this before? Little Chinese stones. These Chinese are very clever. Have a look at those, all right? Will you do that? Make sure they're okay. Nothing radically wrong with them, all right? Can I put all that? Right. Can I put that just about there? You don't mind, do you? All right. Now you can play this game in three ways. You can cover them up like that. You can cover them up like that. What I prefer to do is cover them up like that, all right? Once I've covered them up like that, I take this and I do that, and a strange thing happens. Did you see that? So do that again. What you do is you take them here, you do that, and that happens, all right? I'll do that again. You can do it like this, and it goes like that. You can do it like that, it does that. You can do it like that, it does that. Or you can do it like that, and it does that. And that's chink a chink. Quite easy, really, isn't it? Now that the applause has died down, <laughs> I... <laughs> what I will do is... I'm going to show you a rather strange thing now with a piece of cotton, all right? This is cotton, all right? What we're going to do is take a piece of cotton about a yard long. My nose hasn't grown. All right. What we'll do is take this from here and break it. All right. Now, once you've broken it, will you hold that for me? That's great. What I'm going to do is take them, this, and break it into separate little pieces. One, two. Those of you who can't hear it break, just watch my lips. <laughs> now, I performed this trick for 400,000 people once, and the person next to me loved it. <laughs> what I do is take these little pieces and roll them up into a little ball. Now, I must do this quick before the dove dies. <laughs> There's a dove in there, but don't touch it, or else the ferret will kill it. <laughs> the object of the trick is to take the little pieces and place them onto this piece and tease them, like so. Once you've done that, you take an end, like that. Yes, it's worked. Would you hold your hand out for me? No, the clean one. That's fine. <laughs> Would you grasp one end? That's great. Watch this very carefully. Would you take the other end? That's good. Just sort of tease it. Isn't that strange? Okay. Now, you've examined that piece of paper, right? Yes. It's a piece of paper with three, two, one on. Rather appropriate. Now, watch this very carefully. If I take this and Fold it once and fold it twice. Next, you take from your pocket some invisible dust and sprinkle it. Once you've sprinkled it, you fold it over again, like so, and again. And on the last time, it starts to change shape. Looks rather like a five pound note. Would you agree with that? As true as the man's family. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you. How are you, Wayne? How are you? Great, mate. Good, good to good, see you again. Good, Looking good. very, very sharp as well. Listen, that mystified everybody, that close-up magic there. It's right. really something else. And I'll tell you what, we're going to play back on the old recording. Uh, I want you to talk us through that because none of us know what it's all about. It it's going to come much. up here now. Right. Show us what it's all about. OK. Three, two, one. From this angle. As you can see, I'm folding it up. No tricky moves. No nothing. Go in the pocket. Get the waffle dust. <laughs> sprinkle it over. <laughs> fold again. Fold again. It's just starting to take shape now, as you can see. Five pound note, just about. Too oh, late. Oh, get away. I missed it. It's no good. Yeah. <laughs>
Absolutely superb. And what are you, you going to leave these folks wearing as I've a clue? I've got a, an aerosol can. OK, that's the clue this time. And the rhyme is, a week's hot sun, the air is high, draws many with the urge to fly. There you are. That's the second one. And we're going to say a big thank you to Wayne Dobson. Thank you, Good Ted. luck, Wayne. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Uh, well now, Andy, any idea about that one? Well, it sounds strongly like the holiday, but it could be too obvious. Yeah? yeah. Like yes. Uh huh. How about you, folks? Have you decided? <laughs> sounds like a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Or it sounds a week like a holiday. Some bed. Anyway, we've got two here, one more on the table, of course, and then you have to make up your mind which one you're going to reject if you get through. And here it comes. Here's a young lady I have had the pleasure of working with a while ago, actually. She's going to sing a number for you called The Second Time, but I know you're going to see her many times. Please welcome Rebecca Storm. Forgetting lines that I rehearsed I fear the best, I fear the worst Love is brave in an ambition But a brain makes no Understand the things I do. I'm unpredictable. Yes. How you, darling? Yeah. Smashing, really Thank smashing. You. Good Thank to see you again and looking lovely and sounding good. What are you going to leave in here as the clue? I'm leaving a pineapple. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, and the rhyme is what? The rhyme is this. While you float into pleasant dreams, your mate will be the one who steams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That wow. is the third one on the table. There you go. Thanks a lot. Lovely. Rebecca Storm. Welcome. Bye, love. Mm. Bye. All the best. Good luck now. What I, what I like is it's quite a bit of buzzing going on. Sounds like a what? I only got sounds like, a, sounds like a water bed. Yeah. Oh, a sun bed and a water bed. That's not bad. What do you say, Andy and Claire? A very big duvet, if it makes you steam. Anyway, you've just heard that's the third one. As we have three on the table now, I can read the other two again. Now, the first one came in. It, of course, was a World Globe. Came in from Terry of the Alan Harding dancers who said, 
From all four corners, they'll bounce your way. You'll see what happens without delay. OK? Now then, number two item, the aerosol can, came in from Wayne Dobson, who said, a week's hot sun, the air is high, draws many with the urge to fly. So that is the three on the table. You have to choose one now to reject if you get through the elimination question. So uh, what are you going to do? Yes, we'll make a decision. The pineapple. If you get through, you want to reject the pineapple? Well, I don't like flying. Really you don't like flying? No. Oh, really? What are you going to do then? What one are you going to reject? With his You'll stay with Eddie? Yeah. OK, so that is the one that's going to be rejected. If you get through, and Andy and Claire, you are going to reject the pineapple. If you get through the elimination question, which I have here, put your hand by that button. I see you've got it there. OK, when you think you know the answer, you hit the button and answer. Don't answer before you hit the button, otherwise I do have to offer it to the other couple, OK? Here is the question. This is a Scottish singer turned actress. She shouted her first hit, and that's Ruth. Lulu. Lulu is absolutely right. You got it on the button. Well done. Well done. That's good. Yeah, she went in nice and quick there. Very good. I had a lot more of that to read, but never mind. That means, of course, you're... Oh, Eddie's really worried now. There you go. And we do have to say goodbye, I'm afraid, to Andy and Claire at this point. And Donna is here from the Alan Harding Dancers with the money they won in the quiz, which was how much, Donna? How much was it? £250. £250, folks. Not bad, eh? There you are. Claire, there's your ceramic dusty bin, of course. Lovely. I'll tell you what, in just a sec... Let's take a look at the, over there at Linda. She has for you the consolation prize. And it's two telephones in one. It's a push-button phone with a telephone answering machine and a voice-activated remote control. What about that? How about that? Smash it. That's really good. Yeah, terrific. Andy, good luck to you. You've been smashing a couple. You really have. Claire, Thank you. all the best. Take care. Give them a round of applause, folks. Mine you go now. Thanks so much. Hey. We know, of course, when we come back uh, after the break, you have rejected the aerosol can. No more thoughts on it yet, have you, Ruth? Oh, I've still got thoughts. <laughs> yeah? Think it might have changed? Too bad. Yeah. It's going to be rejected when we come back after the break. We'll see you then. Three, two, one. Don't go far. Uh, welcome back to part three of three, two, one, and we've got Eddie and Ruth, who are from Essex, our engaged couple who get married. Uh, well, how, how long is it, how long away is that? You know, well, you're still thinking. Yeah. About it, yeah? <laughs> thinking. It, it's one of those. <laughs> anyway, you're engaged. We've got that far, and we know, of course, that you've rejected this. And I'm sure in the break you've had more thoughts about it, but it has to be rejected. Let's see what it is for you. Wayne Dobson brought you in the aerosol can and said, "A week's hot sun, the air is high, draws many with the urge to fly." Here we are. Wayne brought you the aerosol can. He said, a week's hot sun, the air is high. That could, of course, mean lazing about somewhere under a cloudless blue sky. That leads to many with the urge to fly, which could also suggest that the travel, well, you could be traveling by plane. But remember, the clue object was an aerosol can. And drawing many with the urge to fly could mean attracting lots of flies. After a week's hot sun, the only thing that does that, at the same time, makes the air high. <laughs> Dusty bin, you've done it. <laughs> Stay away. expect that one, did you? No. Nope. I'm glad for your sake. Dusty, away you go, my friend. You've been rejected very early. Off you go. That's good. Well, here we are now. Now you're going to feel a lot better because whatever happens, you go home with a good prize tonight. All right? We're going to go on then and have our fourth item. And here's a real cheerful Cockney character I've admired for a long, long time. He's going to do one of his very special songs for us. It's all about an unlucky person. Please welcome the talented Richard Digence. Thanks, Ted. Hello there, and this is, yes, a song about being unlucky. And the unluckiest person who ever lived was Christopher Columbus, who discovered America. Just think he went all that way and found that place. Very unlucky. <laughs> well, here's a song about the unluckiest person in the world. For birthdays I get hankies, for Christmas I get socks. When England play the Scots, I get the seat amongst the jocks. When I go to the Queensway warehouse, such disappointing news. I always get the box with no directions, nuts or screws. A trivial pursuit, it's as though it's planned. My question is the only one I cannot understand. 
When I watch a game of cricket, it chucks it down with rain. In a pub, I always sit beside a bloke without a brain. I always spill my takeaways, they always leave a stain. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. Yes, I am. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. When playing darts, the double always falls upon the floor. When I use a public loo, there's no dolt, there's no bolt upon the door. Oh, it's live, isn't it? When I pull a Christmas cracker, I never get the gift. Why do people look at me when there's a bad smell in a lift? <laughs> and, oi, and every game of squash I play, the ball won't bounce. And every fish I catch is never more than half an ounce. Well, it seems that all the bigger ones escaped from off the hook. I never passed a solitary GCE I took. I tried calling the Samaritans, their phone was off the hook. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. Yes, I am. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. I bought a record player that spins round the opposite way. I don't know which is Chaz or Dave or what instruments they play. I started growing veggies, they come out the ground in cans. And if that weren't bad enough, then treats are melting in my hands. <laughs> I did the okie koki, I shook it all about. I put me left leg in, but it didn't come back out. <laughs> Every time I use a car wash, I always park my car. So the thing you put the tokens in is just a bit too far. At Scrabble, all I ever get are six E's and an R. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. Yes, I am. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. Ah. There he is, Rich. How are you, darling? Smash it, as always. You're not going to run mine back in slow motion, are no. you? <laughs> what are you going to leave with me is the clue. What's well, the clue? I ain't ever going to live this down in my pub tomorrow night, but I bought a wand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come right, there lads. with you. <laughs> the clue is, yes, Cinders, you shall go to the ball, for buttons rid you of drudgery's call. Yeah, that's another one. Ladies and Good gentlemen, luck. Richard Digest. Thanks, yes, Richard. Yes, Good luck, mate. Bye-bye. Yeah. go think it away again. Anyway, listen, you've got three on the table again. I can read one of the other two again to refresh your memories. Which one would you like to hear? The, the globe or the pineapple? Yeah. The pineapple. You want to hear this please. one again? Okay, yes. it's the pineapple. This one came in from Rebecca Storm. By the way, she's touring in a Vita all over the country. She's playing Eva Perron. She's a sensational performer, that lady. Okay, she brought you the pineapple and said, while you float into pleasant dreams, your mate will be the one who stings. There you are. So, I you're... I think that's Sunbed with a sauna or something healthy. Uh huh. Well, look, okay, folks, one of them has to be rejected right now. Which one do you think oh, it's going to be this time? You the pineapple. So you're going to reject then the pineapple, okay? okay? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right, that's going to be rejected. Rebecca Storm brought that in. Item three while you float into pleasant dreams, your mate will be the one who steams. That's what she said. Okay. Rebecca brought you in the pineapple while you float into pleasant dreams. That, of course, could mean that you have won a waterbed, as you suggested. Are you any good at being a sailor? Well, don't make waves. Get seasick. <laughs> the reason <laughs> the mention of sailor is because that matches up with the next line. Your mate will be the one who steams, and your mate, in this case, would have been a sailor handling your steamer because you would have won a luxury cruise to the Caribbean. Yes, your holiday would have begun when we flew you to Miami, where you'll board your luxury ship. Once on board, you would have been pampered with nine days of sun and relaxation, the best of food and wine, and come those balmy evenings, you could have danced your way into the small hours. The cruise would have taken you through the Caribbean, visiting some exotic Mexican resorts, and then on to Grand Cayman, plus many other beautiful islands. Finally, arriving back in Miami, after a holiday, you would have never forgotten. Not exactly a waterbed or a sunbed. <laughs> a fabulous prize. It has been rejected, unfortunately, so it has to go. Not to worry, though, we're going to go on and have our last item. Now, we have a group from the world of pop. They've had hits like uh, You To Me Are Everything and Can't Get By Without You, which, of course, were one and two respectively in the charts. Here with Hard Times, welcome The Real Thing. <laughs>
Eddie, not Chris. <laughs> Eddie, good, good, good sound, that, too. Smashing. You've had some good stuff yeah, on that. Fun. It was a real good one. Good so. luck to you. And what are you going to leave them as a clue here? What is that we got? It's, it's chopsticks. Like a pair of chopsticks for okay. me. Okay. That's the clue for you. Okay. And what about the rhyme? What's that say? Okay. A takeaway is it sweet or sour. Inside, they've wormed away each hour. There you are. That's a fabulous Scouse accent too, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. Eddie of The Real Thing. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. All the best, mate. Take care. Well, what do you think of that? Hours, o'clock. Cookie uh -huh. garden. Chinese clock. Garden. Mm -hmm. Chinese takeaway. Well, we shop. now have the final three on the table, of course. No dusty bin here, which is very, very good. And again, you've got to reject one. I can read one of the other two again. Remember, Richard brought you this one here. The wand. And, of course, the, uh, the World Globe came in item number one. From Terry of the Alan Harding Dancers. Right. This one. You're just going to hear this, remember, you're not rejecting. Which right. one do you want to re refresh your memory on? Okay. The wand. The wand. Do you want to hear what Richard yeah. said? Okay, he brought you in. Magic wand with a star on top and said, Yes, Cinders, you shall go to the ball, for buttons rid you of drudgery's call. Yeah. I so. think that's kitchen equipment, buttons. Uh -huh. and... Oh, yeah, yeah, but you, you thought the last one was something else, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. One's got to go. I don't know. What do you I think? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's terrible. If Dusty Bim was there, I tell you, you would know. That's right. Yeah. Whatever you want. No, I've got to Go on, know. darling. Well, this Listen, this is our darling, first yeah, darling, <laughs> sweetheart, you're not married yet, you know. Which one's go? This is our first two. <laughs> what do you reckon? Yeah. Quick, I'll, I'll go with you, darling. I think that's kitchen equipment. Which one's I really this? do, the wand. I yeah? yeah. And, oh, and you don't want that, eh? Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. See, well, now you've told them what YouTube, you think it is. I don't know. YouTube. No, YouTube. YouTube. Go on, you, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You want to get rid of that? We we'll get rid of the. You want to get rid of the satellite? Yeah. Oh, you don't want that. Ship to the moon. It. And you don't want any of that. <laughs> so, is it going to go? Yes. Yes. Right, yes. yes. Please. Yes. Please. Please. Yes, please. So that's going to be. Re it's all right with you, isn't it? That. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, great. So it's going to be rejected. I haven't opened it yet. It's going to be rejected. All right. Yeah. You're. It's going to be rejected. Yeah. She says. All right then. Ruth. A world globe. Okay. Came in from uh, Terry of the Allen Harding dancers who said, "From all four corners, they'll bounce your way. You'll see what happens without delay." Okay. Right, from all four corners, they'll bounce your way. That could mean, of course, you won yourselves a tennis court for your garden, but which could be very awkward if you've only got a window box. <laughs> However, the clue object was a globe of the world. So whatever's bouncing towards you is coming at you, as you suggest, from all corners of the world. So they are signals of some kind, and the result of this is you'll see what happens without delay. Eddie, absolutely right. Take a look at this. <laughs> Yes, indeed, the latest thing in television. Your own satellite dish capable of receiving programs from all around the world. You'll also have got a television set, a tuner and a receiver, plus a remote control for both the television set and the satellite dish. Indeed, thank you very much. A superb prize, I must say. Those dishes do cost a fortune, never mind that everything that went with it was a terrific prize, but you knew what it was, didn't you, Ed? Didn't really want that. Well, and Ruth didn't want it, did you, Ruth? No. And you certainly didn't want it, did you? <laughs> no. Oh, thank goodness for that. OK, we have the final two on the table. <laughs> Again, no dusty bin here, so you're in a good position. And we have, uh, what have we got? We've got the chopsticks, which came in item number five from Eddie of The Real Thing, who said, a takeaway, is it sweet or sour? Inside, they've wormed away each hour. OK? That is one. Richard Dargent's brought you a magic wand with a star on top and said, Yes, Cinders, you shall go to the ball, for buttons rid you of drudgery's call. All right, so that's the final two. One has to be rejected. The one remaining will be the prize that you take home with you tonight. So we think this is kitchen equipment. Uh huh. But we've no idea. No idea. Chopsticks take are. And you don't know what that is at all, no. huh? There you are. Well, again, they're, they're both great prizes, you know that. They need a bit of help now. Well, what would you keep? One chopsticks, one ch I should have asked. What are you going to keep? If it is kitchen equipment, that's what I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're not married yet, so you haven't got any bottom drawer at all, if that's what you think it is, huh? There you are. Is that the bag? We'll go for the chopsticks. 
Okay. That's how McGandle. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> you sure? This could be the second tip I'll in five rubber, minutes. If it's kitchen equipment, I'll buy rubber gloves, all right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon then, folks? Dispose of that. Is that okay with you, yeah. Ruth? Yeah. You we'll sure? Take a chance. You're going to take, take a chance. You've been a great couple, I must say. You've played very, very well tonight. It's going to go, is it? Yes. Yes? yes. It's all right with you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, Ed? All right. The star prize. Okay. Richard Dijon's brought you a magic wand with a star on top. Yes, Cinders, you shall go to the ball for buttons. Rid you of drudgery's call. That's what he said. Now then. Okay. Yes, Cinders, you shall go to the ball, which will probably start you thinking along the lines of winning a big night out somewhere. Let's have a magic mm -hmm. wand. Let's wave the magic wand and see what it actually is. For buttons, rid you of drudgery's call. Well, you would have had less drudgery and time for lots of night out. And the buttons, that was the answer. You just press them and let the machines do your kitchen chores. You were right. Take a look at this. Yes, kitchen equipment consisting of a dishwasher for 12 place settings with five different programs, a microwave oven that also browns your dishes for you, and you would also have got a 5.65 cubic foot fridge complete with freezer. There you go. Now, absolutely right on the kitchen equipment. And Ruth, there yeah, would have been that. Would have been good for the uh, the bottom drawer, the setting up the home. Certainly would. Certainly would. Anyway, this is the prize you're going home with tonight, and you don't know what it is, do you? But no uh, this idea. is the one you're having. No idea. Came in item number five, of course, from Eddie of the Real Thing. He said, "A takeaway is it sweet or sour? Inside they've wormed away each hour." Now then. Okay, Eddie brought you the pair of chopsticks. A takeaway is it sweet or sour? Well, a takeaway could, but sour could suggest dusty bin, but not at this point of the show. Chopsticks point to it being either made of China or something Chinese. Mm -hmm. And what it contains is in the next line. Inside, they've wormed away each hour. Yes, you won a very expensive Chinese chest. And the things worming away inside aren't woodworms, but silkworms. Take a look at this. Yes, a superb Chinese chest made of rosewood and lined with camphor wood and containing these fabulous silks. For the lady, a silk dressing gown with matching nighty plus silk underwear. For the man, a pair of silk pajamas, two silk shirts, two silk ties, and two pairs of silk socks. Oh, dear. How about that? Well, now. Smash it. A honeymoon night we all want to attend. Right. Off we go. Let's get your prize. There you go. Ruth and Eddie, get in and have a look at that. Yeah. Really is absolutely superb. That's it. And hey, uh, your size of shirt, 16 and a half, is that right? How did you know that? Didn't even know that, yeah. <laughs> Don't wear the brown socks on the honeymoon night. Promise me oh, that. Right. But listen, everybody always forgets, of course, about the money they won in the oh, quiz. Right. At this point of the show, Donna has that for us. Donna, what did they win in the quiz? 300 pounds. 300 pounds they got. There you go. Take that, Ruth. There you go. <laughs> Eddie, congratulations, mate. All the best. Ruth, take that on. You've been a smashing couple. Good luck with the wedding. We'll all be thinking about you. Thank you for being our wonderful audience here in the studio. Thank you for watching at home, everybody, and thank all of our guests and our contestants. Till we see you next week, take care. Have a good week. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. There's nothing quite like a nice sing-along with friends, is there? Unless one of your friends is Steve-O, that is, and he's asked you to go on his new game show. Killer Karaoke is on Challenge tonight at 10.